People often ask instructors why they need to learn how to use VORs. Many of us give an explanation about the benefits to situational awareness of practicing VORs or the need to be familiar with them in case of a GPS outage. Look, I'm probably one of the world's biggest cheerleaders for VOR usage, but let's admit it, it's an outmoded form of navigation. But here's an actual use case where using VORs might be better than using GPS. We're going to depart from Whiskey 90 in Virginia, a non-towered field, and fly IFR along Victor Airways to Manassas to the northeast. Our cleared route doesn't contain any departure procedure. We're not going to be talking to air traffic control until we depart the pattern and contact Roanoke departure. How can we be sure we won't impact terrain on the departure? Well, we need to use the obstacle departure procedure. For runway 36 here, that's going to involve making a climbing right turn after reaching 400 feet above the departure end of the runway's elevation, of course, to 066 degrees. That'll put us on an intercept to the 005 radial from the Lynchburg VOR, which will follow outbound at 3,500 feet, then proceed on course. In our case, proceeding on course means we'll fly to swarm and join the airway. Because we have the G1000, we'll naturally want to load the departure procedure into the GPS and have the autopilot fly the navigation. A simple textual departure procedure like this one won't be in the GPS database, though. Either we need to use the so-called raw data straight from the VOR, or we'll need to build the departure procedure ourselves. Let's look at both options. The traditional way to do it is to set the VOR and fly that. The Lynchburg VOR is on 109.2, which the unit IDs as the correct station with the identifier LYH next to it. Now to use the VOR, we'll switch over to the green needles by pushing the CDI soft key. The green number reading CRS is sometimes referred to as the OBS setting. We want that on the 005 radial, which we'll be intercepting. For the departure procedure, we'll be turning right to 066 degrees, so we bug that heading. We push the heading button to activate heading mode on the flight director. Then we bug our filed altitude. Let's say it's 5,000 feet. We push FLC and set our climb airspeed to arm that. Is there no way to set up a radial in our nav database and just fly that though? Here's how it's done on the G1000. We'll look at the Garmin PC simulator, which is a bit more realistic. On the MFD, we go into our flight plan. If we tap the FMS knob, it brings up the cursor. We want to insert a waypoint before the first point on our route, Swarm. So we go to Swarm and hit Menu. Then we scroll to User Waypoint. The waypoint type defaults to what we want, which is a radial and a distance from a waypoint. It even brings up the nearest VOR for us, which is what we want, the Lynchburg VOR. We go down to that, and we're going to want the 005 radial, so we set that. For distance, this isn't as important. The procedure is to fly outbound on the radial until reaching 3,500 feet and then turn on course. So there's no definite point that we'll turn to swarm from. We'll set a distance over 20 miles since we know we won't need to go that far. When we load it, it goes into our route. But now the point we created is connected to our departure airport directly. It doesn't take us along the radial itself. We need to also input the Lynchburg VOR first into the route so that the VOR is connected to the waypoint we created along the correct radial. Finally, we need to activate the leg between Lynchburg and the user waypoint. Now the active leg is the 005 radial. Let's look over at the PFD. We've departed runway 36 and are climbing. We hold runway heading, then turn to 066 as directed in the departure procedure. On the HSI, the needles are pink. We're following the GPS course we set up just now. It's set up to mirror the 005 radial from the Lynchburg VOR. If we push nav, we arm GPS mode. We'll stay on the 066 heading until intercepting the radial as mirrored by the GPS, then we'll track that. Notice the DTK desired track is 009 degrees, not the 005 degrees of the radial. This isn't an error. The 005 radial from the transmitter doesn't match up with a magnetic course of 005 due to changes in magnetic variation over time. So even though we've set the radial in the GPS as 005, the actual GPS track based on magnetic course will be 009. So this is how we can completely avoid using the VOR. But is that worth it? That was a lot of steps. Let's go back to the aircraft on the ground where we're doing it the traditional way off the green needles. To help us out, we can set the radial up on foreflight. Here's how. We first create a waypoint along the radial like we did before. The code will be the three letter identifier, the radial 005, then a slash, then a distance, 20 miles. 
Just like before, we'll also need to insert the VOR itself into the root. We should also have activated the leg between the VOR and the user waypoint like we did on the G1000, but we've left that step out. So as far as ATC goes, we get our release from them and should let them know that we're flying the obstacle departure procedure. They'll expect us to fly direct to Swarm to join our file course, so we need to tell them that in order to avoid terrain, we're going to be flying the obstacle departure procedure and going to the north initially. We take off and climb to 400 feet above the runway, about 1180 MSL, and make our turn to 066 degrees per the procedure. We're going to have this be our intercept heading for the radial. We switch over to Roanoke departure, which was set up on standby. We also arm VOR mode by pushing the nav button. We'll stay on this heading until the needle comes in and then the autopilot will fly us out along the 005 radial. We check in with Roanoke telling him we're on the obstacle departure procedure, who tells us to ident, and then here's what'll happen in the real world. Rather than having us stay on the departure procedure, they'll likely say something like, November 518 Foxtrot Tango, radar contact 5 miles west of Lynchburg 2300, leaving 2900, turn right direct swarm, then resume our navigation. ATC has told us that once we're above the minimum IFR altitude in the area, which happens to be 2,900, they can assign us a radar vector to fly direct to Swarm and continue our filed route. This is happening prior to the 3,500 altitude listed on the departure procedure. We flew the departure procedure in order to avoid terrain we can't see. When we first check in with them, ATC can't give us a radar vector to fly direct to our filed route because of the same terrain concerns. We need to be above a safe altitude, the minimum IFR altitude of 2,900 before they can turn us on course. Had we not been on radar contact, we would have needed to stay on the listed departure procedure until 3,500. But with radar contact and being above the minimum IFR altitude, ATC can take over responsibility for terrain and obstruction clearance. So in reality, we won't expect to fly a departure procedure like this one for too long. Is this a good use case for raw VOR usage over GPS navigation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, check out IFR Ground School and more at the link here and in the description.